long as you're strapping people to rocket ships and accelerating them to five miles a second in eight minutes, that's in, that is inherently exciting. And there will always be people who want to come cover that, uh, both because it's a, it's a significant technology story, it's a political story, it's a human interest story, it's all of those things. Space really wraps all of that up into, into one big ball and it's a lot of fun to cover. In my mind, uh, covering the space program is uh, probably the best job in journalism and covering the explorers of our generation is, is just a compelling and wonderful thing to be able to do. Why well, I want to cover it, it is so necessary for the advancement of the human race. We only advance because we continue to learn. For millions of people in the United States and around the world, the space shuttle experience was seen on television, heard on the radio, or read in a newspaper. Increasingly, it's read about in short updates on internet blogs or in longer discussions on cable news stations. The story they receive is relayed through the senses of reporters, correspondents, and editors who spent decades learning the intricacies of one of the most technical operations humankind has devised. Uh, it was two years down here as a full-time space reporter before I even felt remotely comfortable uh, covering the shuttle. felt like I really understood uh, what was going on to any degree at all. Uh, and I think translating that to the public, being able to convey um, that complexity, translate it into, into simpler terms and do it well, is an enormous challenge and I think it's, uh, and, it, and it still is today. Reporters got their first taste of the space shuttle program when Columbia launched in 1981. For the first launch there was more than 2,000 reporters and probably 95% of them had never seen a rocket. So we had a, a real learning uh, experience to try and put them through. Thousands of people lined the beaches and riverfronts around Kennedy Space Center to witness that first launch in person. It was the first time a spacecraft with wings launched, and it came more than six years after the last time astronauts flew into space. But we're also very worried at the time because it was an extremely uh, dangerous flight test mission. There's a lot of questions because, first of all, it was really advanced. Till it's in orbit, really, you don't breathe a lot. I mean, you're, you're listening very intently to the uh, information that's coming in and uh, making sure that everything is going well. And of course, it went very, very well. Two days later, on the west coast of America, thousands more came out to Edwards Air Force Base in California to see Columbia return on wings instead of parachutes. I remember when uh, John Young and I were coming in for a landing at Edwards Air Force Base and he was banking left, and we looked down out on the lake bed there and there were thousands of people. We could see <laughs> we were about 35, 40,000 feet at that particular point, but I said, look at all those folks out there. They come out to see us land. During the next three decades, the news media would transfer the excitement, drama, and tragedy of NASA's space exploration to throngs of viewers and readers. I think the most challenging aspect of the job is the complexity of the hardware and understanding uh, how space uh, missions are carried out. I think a large part of our job is translating NASA into English. There's a lot of jargon, there are a lot of acronyms, and uh, we have to figure out a way to explain the highly technical uh, material in a way that your average uh, newspaper reader is going to understand. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. Before Challenger, uh, you, you realized this was a dangerous business, but you didn't really believe it. Reporters have also witnessed two space shuttle accidents firsthand and relate it to their audience. Challenger's launch in January 1986. Columbia Houston Com Check. Columbia Houston UHF Com Check. And Columbia's breakup during reentry in February 2003. I'll always remember I saw this little girl in the parking lot of the Cocoa Beach Holiday Inn, and she just pointed up at that conflagration in the sky and said, the teacher's up there, the teacher's up there, and um, that sticks with you. As someone watching the space shuttle take off and land and gets to know these people, they were both gut-wrenching. I mean, 
You know, the first time challenger, you know when you're looking at that, that fireball in the sky, you know you're, you're watching seven people give their lives for something they believe in. That's gut-wrenching. And the same with Columbia. Uh, the loss of life, of course, is the number one thing uh, that sticks with you. I mean, you can't, you never get over that and you always put yourself in the family's shoes and, and friends and, and you, you feel the same sympathy anybody in the, uh, in the public would feel. Some crews you get to know very well. When you see the shuttle launch and, you know, you have friends on board and uh, people that you've interacted with for uh, you know, a period of time in the lead up to launch, it, it really makes a difference because uh, you know there are men and women flying on board that uh, have families and have children and uh, it makes it all that much more real. The news media would see its own numbers grow and adjust to new forms of communication, including the advent of news channels and the revolution of the internet with its own specialized brand of reporting. Uh, when I first came down from my college newspaper, I had a manual typewriter, and you'd read the story to an editor, you know, and you're writing for the next day paper, and there was this huge delay between, you know, when you did a story and when it actually showed up in print. And as the shuttle program evolved, uh, cable news networks began, and all of a sudden you evolved into this 24-hour news cycle. The days of going out and covering a launch and writing the story for the next day's newspaper are gone. We're finding ourselves being sort of like, uh, I play a TV reporter on the internet. For the space enthusiast, for someone who's already interested in this and would follow it anyway, even if it was by magazine or, or whatever, it's a great thing for them. Uh, because with, with all the blogs that are out there and the, 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 the web presence of magazines, and, uh, newspapers, television, you can get an enormous amount of information that would have been much more difficult to get before. Because they can ask questions, they can participate, they can get into it. NASA also began broadcasting on its own network during the shuttle program, originally called NASA Select, now called NASA TV. Believe me, when I started in the business, radio was the big thing, not TV. TV was trying to catch up with where radio was. So I'm seeing it all change. People are very curious about what, what, what is going on. And so that's a good thing from a public outreach standpoint. It's really good to have that kind of interest in our launches here. Although they found increasingly advanced ways to cover the shuttle, the shuttle itself remained the center of attention and a touchstone for many societal changes too. The same shuttle orbiters were used to assemble the International Space Station that is made up totally of international partners who in the last 60 years were at war with each other. Better enemies of the United States when our parents grew up now getting together on the space shuttle and building uh, almost a million pound facility in orbit. Space exploration is expected to remain a focal point for news media just as it has in the past. Again I think all coverage will get more personal to the audience. I think people will demand that they get the freshest and the latest and that they will be able to participate. And you can do that on the internet. And I think it's going to get more and more and more that way.